Thanks for tuning in online to Community Church. As a church, we are focused on sharing the love and hope of Jesus with everyone we meet. We hope you enjoy today's message. Glad you're in the house this weekend. I want to welcome everybody. Join us live online across the state of Virginia, up in New York, up in D.C., down in North Carolina, in Pennsylvania, and Indiana, in Florida, and Ohio, and on the Community Church app. Let's welcome our online church family. We love you guys so much. We want to say hey to our God Behind Bars campus also. We love you guys and pray for you every single weekend. Love what God is doing right there and moving into your lives. And uh, just cool story even as, as they'll be watching this. And we, we love you guys to know this weekend at our God Behind Bars campus, 17 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. And so we just celebrate that. If you're new to Community Church, we have a campus uh, in, in partnership with God Behind Bars that meets at Rivers Correctional Facility in North Carolina, and, uh, and so they are taking part of this service right now, and, and uh, God is on the move there and just excited uh, to see all that He is doing. And you know, it's, it's fun to kick off a new message series, and that's what we're doing this week in a new series called Room. And uh, I want to I want to kind of set up where we're going to go the next few weeks. Uh, but before I do that, I want to just take a moment this weekend. And and if you're watching online, I hope you'll join in in, in part of this. And we just want to take a moment. We want to pray. We want to pray for um, those in Haiti that are suffering, those in Florida that are suffering. You know, through the Bahamas. And as this uh, storm is moving up the coast, we know that we serve a faithful, good God. And uh, he does not cause disaster, but he will rescue people and he will cause it to work for good. Romans 8, 28 says that God causes all things to work together for the good. We want to believe that God is going to cause a lot of the tragedy that's happened uh, over the past uh, several days to be worked for good. And so can we agree in prayer as a church uh, here today and those watching online? Let's pray. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for your favor and your goodness. And God, we lift to you right now all those who have been impacted by, by Hurricane Matthew, Lord, all those families who have lost loved ones. And Jesus, we ask you to show up. Father, we ask you to be that good, good God that truly brings peace, that brings comfort in the midst of chaos, that brings joy in the midst of the storm. We thank you that you show up in a mighty way and you show off in the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're kicking off a new series, and let me tell you where we're going in this series called Room. Next weekend's going to be a really good practical message that you're going to want to be a bringer to, is we're going to talk about uh, how to have more room in your schedule, starting with scheduling your mind, how you need more room in your schedule, and uh, most of you just are like, it's a hurricane and I'm at church. And so... Um, then in, in week number three, we're going to talk about the importance of rest. So you're going to want to be here for week number three. Week number four, we're going to talk about, um, and, and you don't want to miss this one because we're going to talk about money and how to have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to your finances. And I think everybody says, I'd like to know how to do that. The weekend I'm most excited about in this message series, week number five, and there's a chance I could move it up to week number three, I don't know, but I'm gonna talk about having room at the table and we're gonna talk about politics and voting. And we're gonna ask the question, is there room at your table for people who don't agree with you? You know, I'm not gonna preach the message here this weekend, but in the midst of what we have naturally going on as a storm, we also have a political storm going on, specific just to president in the United States. And I, I, really, I really want you to know this as your pastor. This is what I really hope uh, our church would get, is that we need to not make our faith in Jesus the reason we support a political candidate. Because there is not Jesus running for president. There isn't. We need to be all in, in love with Jesus, live for him, and then we need to make decisions in our life based on that. And in that series, that message that I'm gonna talk about, um, I know without a doubt there's a good chance half the church uh, may agree with me. <laughs> it's not what you thought I was gonna say. But I'm not gonna preach that message here tonight. 
is what I'm thinking about right now. Week number six, uh, week number six is going to be fun also. We're going to talk about marriage and dating. And uh, I want to make sure any teenagers know that I'm going to kind of bring about from understanding middle school age dating, which I don't believe in dating as a parent in middle school age, but you know, whatever happens, I found out my five-year-old, he has girlfriends, not really, but you know, uh, we're going to talk about from, from, from middle school uh, all the way to how to have a healthy, strong marriage. And I believe that uh, it'll be something good for every single one of us. So let's get started this weekend. Everybody say room. Room. Room, room is an interval of time. That's how we're going to look at it, not as in a space that you go to live in. And uh, I want to look at having a little bit more room, more room meaning excess, more than what you need. And in life, at least for me, when it comes to room, I could often stand to have a little bit of space beyond what's necessary. I was on a flight recently, and, and I'm 6'4", and, and one of the things about flying when you're 6'4", is you never have enough room. And, uh, and you get there, and, and if you've ever flown, which many, many of you have, and, and you're my height, you can just kind of, this is about what it feels like. You know, that actually looks like I might need to use the restroom, but you know, you just get kind of, you just get kind of in your seat, and you can't really move, and it's so uncomfortable. You know what happens when you're really uncomfortable? You get frustrated. In fact, I was on a flight a couple weeks ago, and, and the guy sitting next to me, and this is, this is no joke, and I was praying for him. I sat down next to him, and he was also a big guy, and he was like, cussing out his phone and like literally just yelling so frustrated. And as I prepared for this message, I'm like, you know what? I bet if he had had more room, he wouldn't have been so frustrated. Because when you feel like you're just added up to here, whether it's literally in your physical space, whether it's in your emotions, whether it's in your mind, whatever it may be, you can't seem to find joy. Joy increases when I have room. And there's a fight for room in our life today. There's a fight to actually have room because we've learned the great art of multitasking. Now, none of us here today are actually great multitaskers, but many of us would say we're great multitaskers. And what it means is we've found a way to live our life with no excess room. We found a way to live our life so that we are constantly, completely busy, but yet when we have room, stress gets removed from our life. We're able to have a greater level of peace. It may or may not come as a great shock to say this to you, but I believe the greatest reason we struggle to live our life with more room and it comes to our time and it comes uh, to our money and it comes uh, to any aspect, it's because we are all uh, on, this, on this race for success and for perfection and we're trying so hard to get there. And the truth is we all think we'll get there one day and when you get there, you realize there is no there. I want to talk about uh, here this weekend to kick it off, how we can make sure, and it's not, it's not the rat race, how we can make sure we don't continue to live our life just striving for this place of perfection or striving for this place of success by settling in God's love. Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to read some scripture here, and I believe it's going to be so good to really encourage our hearts. It says this in verse 14, the apostle Paul writing this. He said, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Right there he begins to pray and kind of set something up for all of us to understand. He's talking about strengthening us inside through his spirit. He's, he's setting up a very important truth about being a follower of Jesus, and it would be this, what's inside is much more important to get right than what's outside, because when you get what's inside right first, what's outside will also become right. He goes, I want to give you strength through your spirit on the inside. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong. How many of you want some strong love of God? I mean, you think about life, you're like, I want this in my life. May you have the power, he's praying, to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. I believe that when we know God's love like this, that when we know how passionately, as a father, he loves us, it allows us to live our life with more room. It allows us to live our life with peace. It allows us to go through this life where we're not trying to achieve something so that we can earn his love, but we live from his love 
and we're able to actually be there for more fulfilling. He finishes this little passage, verse 19. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. God's unconditional love. How wide, how strong. It's so good. And it sounds so good when we read it. And many of you today, you've embraced that love and you've, you've felt confident about that love. And maybe some of you, you've kind of been like, I just can't imagine that God would love me. But no matter where you're at, I know the truth is this can be one of the quickest things we forget. And we begin to go after, again, the perfection, the success of life. If you're constantly trying to earn something in life, do you know you can't actually receive it? If we're living our life to constantly try to earn God's approval, we'll never actually receive it. And I want to talk about, specific to this weekend, why our life would look different if we lived from God's love. Why it would be a life of fulfillment by talking about being present. I read a book recently talking about being present in life and And I believe often we're not present because we're aiming for perfection. And so I've titled my message this weekend, What If Present Is Perfect? What if being present in life is actually the ultimate? Not some achievement, not some level of perfection, but what if really being there? That's what I mean by present. I don't mean like what if you are a present or if you get a present. I'm talking about present, being here in the now. Have you ever had that feeling, begin to feel a little bit guilty, maybe, because your mind wasn't actually where your body was in the midst of a conversation or work or church? Maybe some of you are feeling guilty right now, and you're just like, you, you weren't present. You were there, but you weren't present. Maybe you've been driving somewhere before, and you get there. Let's just show hands on this one. You've been driving somewhere, you get there, and you don't remotely remember driving. (laughs) Like, this should scare all of us. Keep your hands up. And both of my, this should scare all of us. Because we're not, we're not present. What happens when you're not present? You miss the moment. And the the reason I sometimes, uh, I'm not present and I'm striving and I'm going after is because there's a level of perfection, there's a level of success that that we desire. It's a a God-given desire to achieve and to have a life of impact that makes a difference. But what I want us to understand is I believe being present in the moment is the perfection God is after. I believe the prosperity that the Bible talks about. In fact, I love Psalm 1. It talks about when you meditate on God's promise, when you focus on what he says, you will prosper in all you do. I believe present in the process makes prosperity. It's not about getting to the end. It's about being here in the moment. And it hurts when you realize sometimes that you're not. You know, as a dad, I can tell you, my, uh, my kids sometimes, and none of them are in this service. And by the way, I made a deal with my kids recently, especially after a weekend recently. Um, and it's storming. You guys have nowhere else to go. So we could really be here all night. But um, in fact, I'm not sure you'll be able to leave, those of you that are at the Western Ranch campus. So, um, so my kids understand that as a communicator, you know, a lot of times I'm going to share a story about them and and because it just helps to make a point, right? Because this is my life and I have five kids if you're new uh, to our church. And so after really this, it was this last weekend, maybe our first Wednesday service, I know um, one of my kids, I, 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 um, I called them out maybe a little bit too much, meaning that a lot of people were asking them questions. And so I said, you know what? I'm sorry, I've not done this. I've talked about it, but I made a deal with them. You're gonna get $5 every single weekend I use you in an example. And the thing is, this weekend, they're all like, can you use me in an example this weekend? Dad, can you talk, talk about me? Sometimes I know with my kids, and, and, I, and I love them, we'll be in a conversation, and I want to be present there, but the topic isn't necessarily something that you care about. And this is, this is me being honest, and this could be with you as a kid. Students, this could be you when your parents talk to you. Spout across the board. You know, I don't really, it's, it's hard for me to want to be present in the details. You know, like my kids can tell you like a hundred different details of a 22-minute cartoon episode. 
And I'm like, I, I mean, I, I, I don't care. But, <laughs> but I know this. Being present in that moment will actually determine the prosperity of our relationship. What if present is perfect? What if I haven't been making room to be present in, in my own life or in the lives of others because I'm trying to get to some level of perfection and I'm missing the whole point? What if presence perfect? You've seen families out to eat and you can say, that's great, the whole family's out to eat and then you look close and you see six people on their phones. They're there, they're not present. I don't believe life is merely about the end. I believe it's about the journey, the day to day. I believe that God has called us to live. Yeah, life's never gonna be perfect, but there is a good life on the earth he has for us. In fact, 1 Thessalonians chapter four, and the message says this, God has invited us, God hasn't invited us into a disorderly, unkept life but into something holy and beautiful, as beautiful on the inside as the outside. Do we have room to experience that? Or are we letting ourselves live hectic? In fact, if you're taking notes, write this down if you haven't already filled up your note sheet from all the amazing things that I may have or may not have said. Um, <laughs> By the way, we have journals available uh, in, our, in our bookstore. We really encourage journaling. I encourage you, um, make it a regular practice of your life. Pray, write down things that God has said to you. We have them really, really cheap in our bookstore. And if you don't have the money, we'll give you one for free. We want to make sure you're able to write down uh, what God is speaking to your heart. But if you're taking notes this week, write this down. God has invited us to live fully alive. He's invited us to live fully alive. That's what it meant in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 when he says it's not this unkept crazy life. It's a holy, beautiful life. How do you know it's not beautiful when you're just running around like crazy and you're not actually in a moment? There have been so many times where I'll see somebody and I'll say, you know, I haven't seen you in a long time if it happens to be at church or something. And, and they'll say, I've been busy. I've been so busy. Some of you may be here today, you're like, that's me, my first time in church in six months, and I'm glad you're here. But if the reason you've not been in church because you're just so busy, the room question's got to hit hard today. Sometimes in life we, we don't have room for more stuff, but yet we're striving for more stuff. I don't believe anybody here today would say that we believe money will make us happy, but do we keep ourselves busy just trying to get more of it rather than making maybe some hard choices now so we could live free? Why is it that we struggle like that? Why is it we really struggle to say, you know what, I wanna live with room? I believe it's because we struggle to really believe that love of Ephesians chapter three. We struggle to really trust that God meant it when he said it. That the life you're after comes when you understand inside how much I love you. And when that love is what you live from. J Jesus asked this question in Mark chapter eight. He said, what good would it do to get everything you want and lose the you? The real you. What could you ever trade your soul for? We, we've, we've mistaken pushing it to the limits. And please hear me. This is not a message, nor is there any message in this series about embracing laziness. Just make sure some of you, and I, it's always important to be like, that's awesome, Pastor Michael said, start laying on the couch more. <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. You should work very hard. You should go to bed very tired because you worked so hard. You should be tired because you've been present and you've had room to be present in the moment. I, I love what Augustine said, a, a father of the faith sort of, if you will. He said, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. I believe when we know that, 
When we believe that, we're able to focus on what matters instead of continuing to strive. We don't keep adding things to our life. We don't keep the, the stuff getting more and more. Instead, we say, I want to focus on what actually matters. In fact, there's a great book called Essentialism. I've recommended it before, but you might want to check it out. It's not a Christian book. It's just about really getting your life a bit more in order. And uh, in that book, there's this quote. It says, the wisdom of life consists in the elimination of non-essentials. I don't know how many times I've missed what matters because I was doing something that didn't matter. Anybody had that happen? And why? It's because I fill my life sometimes with stuff that just doesn't matter. And so a lot of what we hope happens in this whole series, as we talk about schedule, as we talk about money, as we, you talk about having rest, is that we learn to really look at our life and see what matters, that we don't just do busy work. In fact, this is for you students, but I would love it. I read as an idea from essentialism, what if schools eliminated busy work and replaced it with important projects that made a difference in the whole community? How awesome would that be? But do do you know we can all begin to live our life like that? Because when we have room for what matters, that's what we do. John Maxwell said this, you cannot overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. You cannot overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. Many people, we never experience this fully alive life God has for us because we live our life as if everything's important. And if everything's important, nothing's important. I thought more of a response would come from that, but some of you are like, it's so quiet in here that he will hear me, just me, if I answer this right now. So I'm not sure I actually want to speak up. we, we, We go after so many things, and I've talked about this before, but it's good to bring it back. We go after so many things because we deal so much with FOMO. Fear of missing out. Maybe it's, okay, I get this and I want to have room, but I, I, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss out on something that really matters. If, if we're not going and going and going, we're going to miss something out there, the elusive something. Nobody knows what that something is. Fear of missing out on something. No clue. No clue what it is, but there's a fear of missing it. And so we choose to not be present because I'm thinking about something completely different. And I'm missing life. I'm missing life. You know the beauty of all this is? We don't have to do that. The, the greatest beauty, I feel like, of this whole message this weekend is with God's love as our foundation. We get to remember, we get to choose. No matter what your past has been, you're like, I'm going to live present. Yeah. I'm going to live present. Greg McCown says this, the ability to choose cannot be taken or given away. It can only be forgotten. How many of you have ever felt like, I just have no choice? But that's not really, I mean, I'm, again, hands up, but that's not really true. We get to choose. There's always consequences. There's always benefits to our choices. But when Jesus asked the question in Mark chapter 10, verse 51, to to those in need, to to a sick person, what do you want me to do for you? There's a choice we've got to be ready to respond to God on. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What life do you want to live? It's a choice, and you get to make it. It's a choice to be present in what matters. The world's going to tell us how to live. We get to choose. Do we let the world tell us? Or do we trust God's love enough 
to be present. I, I think the reason this message hits me so much is when we're stressed, when we're not focused on what matters, there's a reality. And that's we often disappoint people. This may or may not be good news, what I'm about to say to you. You're going to disappoint people with your life. You get to choose who the people are you disappoint with your life. When we choose to be present in what matters, I believe we make the right choice as to who to disappoint. I was forced this week to ask myself some tough questions. Tough questions as a, as a leader, tough questions as a pastor, as a dad, as a husband. When it comes to being present, like do the people I love the most get the least of me? Because I stress and pour out so much, so many other places. For you, do the people you love the most get the least of you? You struggle to be present where it matters the most because there's some level of perfection you're believing eventually this will measure success. While I believe that perfection is the journey that we're on. It's easier to be impressive to strangers than it is to be consistently kind behind the scenes. I stand up here almost every weekend and and share my heart and I work hard. I work hard to be transparent. Because I want you to know you have a pastor that's the same on the stage as he is in real life. We're all far from, we're all far from perfect. But I wonder, what do our loved ones get? Are we present? I've been struck by this concept. I've made some I hope changes beginning the processes. I read, a man said, I, I, I wanna be loved more than I wanna be looked up to. I begin to just share my heart with you. Hope that's all right tonight. I, I wanna be loved by my kids more than I wanna be looked up to by you as your pastor. I wanna be loved by Megan more than I want to be looked up to. So then I'm like, does my life reflect that? Am I present then where it matters most? So Friday, when I would normally be doing message prep and finalizing my message for the weekend, I went on a field trip with my five-year-old to the pumpkin patch and 20 other five-year-olds. <laughs> I only stayed two and a half hours. I left early. <laughs> Don't celebrate me too much. I have this understanding, and I actually learned it a long time ago when I first went into full-time paid ministry. And that was if I order my life right, meaning I never put pastoring the church before pastoring my family, if I order my life right, God will take care of the rest. So it's okay that I spend less time because I was present where I was supposed to be present. It actually makes me better at what I'm supposed to be doing. I know that I'm not talking to a room full of pastors or church leaders, but could I tell you, I believe it's the same for you. Be present where it matters most and God will take care of the rest. It's only one way. I'm comfortable to do that. And there's only one way I would expect you to be comfortable to do that. And that's if you know in your heart, all of my trust really is in Jesus. So if you know in your heart that passage of Scripture of Ephesians chapter 3 that you believe, man, God's love, it's so, 
it's so strong, it's so deep, it's so wide, it's so great. I'll never fully understand how much he loves me, but I live from that love. It's when we understand that and have that place of trust in Jesus that we can understand being present in the process is perfect. So my, my hope for maybe some today it would be a recommitment to Jesus. Maybe for some it's the first time. And this is, this is real, and here's why I want you to know it's real, is your life will show you real easily if you really believe this or not. Because we can all look at where am I present the most. Are you more present in a staff meeting than you are at family dinner? Wherever we're the most present will show us where our trust is. I think we should be present everywhere we are. Trusting that Jesus will take care of things. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer here in just a moment tonight. And before I do, I, I'm just going to ask you tonight, if you, if you pray this prayer for the first time or first time in a long time, or if you know tonight you are, maybe you're committing to trust Jesus for the first time or for the first time in a long time, I'd ask that you'd let us know on your connection card and drop it with our ushers before you leave. But I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and sing that, the whole song from the top tonight. Worship team. We've got a great worship team, don't we? But I want, us to, I want us to spend a little bit extra, take an extra five minutes at the end of our service tonight to remind ourselves how good God is, that we can trust him. So would you pray this prayer with me and then we'll stand to our feet and we'll sing together. Say, Father God, I love you. Thank you for loving me. I thank you for making a way for me to live free. Forgive me for carrying the weight of my life by myself. Today, I put it in your hands. I trust you completely. From now on, all my hope is in you. I declare I'm all in for Jesus. Amen. Let's give God praise one more time. Thank you for watching the service today. If you began or renewed your relationship with Jesus today, or you need prayer for something going on in your life, please let us know. If you're watching on a computer, you can do that by clicking on one of the buttons below. Or if you're watching us on the Community Church app, you can select Contact Us under the About Us tab. We'd love to know your story and how Jesus is using Community Church to impact your life. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and we hope you'll keep watching and taking next steps in your relationship with Jesus.